Another problem we have, in addition to the sticky notes refusing to disappear, is of course that as soon as we start the game, the player is faced with text um, and an empty text box, which doesn't really mean much and is distracting. So what we want to do is we want the text box only to appear when the game has something relevant to tell the player. So at the beginning of the scene, we actually want to hide the entire layer. Let it not bother us. So we're going to add another action. Uh, we're going to look uh, for layers and we're going to hide a layer. And the layer we're going to hide is UI layer. Let's select that and let's click OK. What we want to do then is uh, when the player clicks on things, we want to add an action and we want to show that layer. So we're only going to see the user interface when the player has clicked on something that is relevant. So again, we're going to create another action. We're going to look at, look for it under layers and cameras. And we're going to show the layer and the layer we are showing is UI layer. Now when the player clicks elsewhere on something else that is not relevant, we're going to hide the layer again so that it's only on when we really um, expect to learn something from the game when it has some information to communicate through the text. So um, we are going to create another condition here. Let's add a new empty event. And the condition we're looking for is, again, when the cursor is positioned on the object. We're going to select clickable here but we're going to invert the condition. So we're going to check the, uh, to make the game check for when the cursor is positioned somewhere else, not over a clickable object. I'm going to click OK. And we're going to, again, create the mouse condition. The one we're going to use here is when the mouse button is being pressed or touch held. We're choosing left button here, and let's click OK. So when this happens, so it clicks the button, and the cursor is not over a clickable object, then we're going to hide the user interface layer. So again, we're going to layers, hide a layer, UI layer. One other thing we may want to do is we'll create a, another action for the clickable condition here. Um, if the player clicks on something that is clickable, but for some reason we have forgotten the game uh, to tell the game about the, this particular object, we're going to create a default response. So we're going to create an action for the text object, modify the text, text box, set to something very terse that just indicates some kind of indication has happened. Now, if the system actually knows of the object um, and the variable matches something that we've listed here, it will then replace the text with what we tell it to replace it with later on under the sub events. But otherwise, it's just going to be set to ellipsis. So at least we know that, um, yeah, some interaction has occurred. Um, so some of you may have noticed that we're using two different mouse conditions here. So this one is left mouse button was released. This one is touch or left mouse button is down. Um, I don't really know why that is. The thing is, that's the only way I've been able to get it to work. I need to look into how GDevelop actually analyzes interactions between the objects. But if I were to set both of these events to left mouse button released or touch uh, or left mouse button is down, then it doesn't seem to work for some reason. It just hides the object. So experimentally, this has been proven the way to go, and that's where I'm going to leave it at. One other thing we need to add um, as an action here is we want every time a click has been made to reset the animation for the sprite called object item, sorry, item to be set to zero. So once you've clicked somewhere else, the animation for the sprite resets to zero, there's nothing on the screen, um, and the object is gone. So let's test it and see if it works. 
So we'll click on stuff. You can see that there was nothing here to begin with. If we click here, the box disappears. We can click on other things. If we click on the door, the door is locked. I cannot get out. If we click on the bin, we can see the post-it note. If we click somewhere else, the note is gone. And we will click on other objects. It doesn't appear again unless we click on the bin again. So we have a, a basic system in place which allows us to examine objects and show the player close-ups uh, for the things they want to examine in more detail. Or actually, we want them to examine in more detail because we get to decide which objects we're going to show um, closer up. And the way you go about it is you can create more animations for the item sprite um, and alternate between them based on where the player clicked. I figure we don't need a close-up of the french fries because they're not essential for the purposes of the game, but something like a post-it note or something that contains a clue uh, as to how to proceed, that one um, object might be worthy of the player's attention if we may want to add some kind of animation there. Right, so the next step would be to create um, another part of the room and see if the player can move around and have um, a chance to examine different parts of the room because you're expected to get to see um, different sides. Right now we're just facing the display and the computer. There's more going on in most Escape the Room games, so we're going to add another bit, another part of the room that the player can interact with.